Welcome to my Atari ST nostalgia trip. I'm recording this video today uh, to be published on Christmas Day, so I figured out it had to be something special. Um, and for that reason, I chose to play one of the best games from the 80s, at least in my view, which is Space Quest 3. And Space Quest 3 is a graphical adventure using Shares SCI engine, uh, which had a higher resolution of 320 by 200, so it, it was more advanced compared to the previous one. And it also gave some extra functionality like using the mouse for movement and inventory access, but everything else you still uh, you had to use a text parser to type all your commands. Uh, now this game picks up after the events of Space Quest 2, uh, which is a game I never played back then, so I didn't know any of the backstory. And there's also no specific goals given in this game, you will just sort of learn it as you go along. Um, lucky for me, this game explains its own story during the introduction and later during the gameplay itself. Um, when we played this game, uh, we had a color monitor, uh, yeah, and I played it mostly in color. But out of curiosity, I also tried to run it in monochrome to see if the new Shara engine actually supported it. And to my surprise, it actually did. It did support monochrome. Um, even, yeah, the graphics were still only 320 by 200. I, I found it pretty cool nonetheless. Um, one thing this game also supported was using the Roland MT32 to play your music uh, using the MIDI ports. Um, we did not have one, uh, but what we did have was a keyboard at home um, that also had a MIDI interface. And it was by no means an MT32, but we still liked to play the music through this keyboard, even if it didn't sound exactly right, to be honest. Um, but we also knew a guy who did have an MT32, and I remember this game sounding absolutely fantastic. So, uh, therefore, sort of in accordance with my rules, and bending them a little bit because uh, of a Christmas present to myself, I guess, I will play this game like probably nobody ever played it. I will play it in monochrome, but with Roland MT32 for the sound. So, let's play. And I also copied the files of this game to the hard drive to not be bothered by loading times between screens too much. Uh, which I also didn't do back in the day, but yeah, sometimes you have to cheat a little bit. So I will try not to talk too much through the intro, so we can all enjoy the music. So it finally got a bit quieter. So apparently in the previous game I escaped in an escape pod and I'm sort of drifting through the universe. But now something seems to have picked me up.
Yeah, and as you can see, the, the explanatory text is actually pretty hard to read in monochrome mode. But apparently these garbage robots don't have uh, a lot of regard for organics, so I'm just picked up like some piece of crap. So the small pot is jarred by a shot and sock, which triggers the sleep chambers something something. Ah, revive mode, I guess. Man, this is hard to read. So you notice that the sounds from the pot grow softer until they are imperceptible. Having served its purpose and taxed its resources, the pot gives a final hum and shuts down. Which is basically the, the, the game's way of telling you that, yeah, don't even try to go back in that one to try to escape, because it won't work. Yeah, and I really like this very, very atmospheric background music, which... I mean, even in a default ST chip sound, this tune sounded quite nice, as I remember. But yeah, in this one, it sounds really good. And the world is very monochromatic, so you can't really see where you're going. But it has its charm. And you can use the mouse in this version to tell to tell Roger Wilco where to go. But it's not the most... Yeah, it's not the most important one. Uh, sorry, not the most intelligent type, because... It really just he just walks into a straight line where your mouse pointer is. So if you want to want him to get behind something, yeah, and he doesn't. So I will leave the mouse alone for now because it doesn't really work anyway. So I'm standing in a debris cluttered junk bay. An escape pod rests in the middle of the room. Yeah, I know, I just got out of that one. There are chunks of metal lying around, which seem to be small sections of old spaceware. So, is there interesting stuff on the floor? The floor is composed of a mosaic of overlapping welded steel plates. The menage of used plates appear to have been cut from a variety of sources. There is a small round object lying nearby. Now, the fact that all the metal stuff is, is cut means it's probably not a very good idea to stay on this ship. Yeah, and as you can see, Roger's suit sort of disappears in in the same color as the floor, which is the same when you play it in color. So what object are we looking at then? A closer look at the object on the floor reveals that this is a warp motivator. It looks a bit more high-tech than the other junk strewn around this locale. Sturdily constructed, it only its only protrusion is a modular plug near its base. So usually when you get this much of a description from an object, it means you have to do something with it. And while relatively small, it seems to be quite dense. I think we're looking at the potential hernia if anyone attempts to uh, pick it up, or if any attempts are made to manually relocate it. Which means, okay, this is probably a puzzle in the game. I found it quite surprising that actually Roger Wilco being a janitor knows what a warp motivator is. But we should have a look around. And it's actually quite surprising how long changing a screen still, uh, still takes loading it from the hard drive. Maybe the interface was just not that fast or something. Various types of abandoned spacecraft litter the floor of this intergalactic junkyard. All this place needs is a junkyard jog. You shiver at the thought.
this build looks craft. What a, what a word. Looks like it has been. I've seen a lot of action in this day. You believe it to be a bowtie fighter dating back to the Cologne Wars, a true relic, which is of course a reference to Star Wars. Yeah, this game had a lot of humor in it. And not a fine but worthless acne product, so apparently Wally Coyote was also picked up by this junk spacecraft at some time. Let's just save the game. Ah, it was a five. Yes. Yeah, let's just save some deaths. Because of course, if you try to get this sheet of metal, you die. Which is highly logical. He's, he should have been more, more careful, I guess. It's a bit hard to see in the monochrome mode, but yeah, this is quite a bloody death. <laughs> it's obvious that the metal was sharper than you. The resulting laceration turns you into a living fountain, at least for a few moments. Unfortunately for you, this show was your finale. Good luck in the afterlife. Yeah. It's, it's a way to lower your blood pressure. Yes, it is. Let's just explore the ship a little bit further. Now this video will also be a bit longer than the ones. I will not play through the entire game, but I think I will play long enough to, to get off the ship. So we get an idea of the game. Um, as you can see in monochrome, this game looks kind of, well, black and dark, which made it difficult to play. I, I must admit, I used to play this in color, which was a little bit easier. So yeah, the contrast between between the graphics and the sound quality are quite big. So he's on a conveyor belt. And this doesn't look good. It's no place for sightseeing. No, it isn't. Now the interesting thing is you can stand and you can walk, but you cannot walk back. Uh, but even if you could, you would probably fall to your death on the other side anyway. You couldn't climb down. Uh, what you have to do here is jump to escape a very certain death. And as you can see, there's quite some movement on the screen. And then this engine suffers from quite, quite a hefty slowdown. But at least in this game, when you when you switch to a screen, it doesn't keep he doesn't keep walking like like he did in King's Quest, like King Graham will just switch the screen and then suddenly plunge to his death because you couldn't react in time. Here you actually have some time to to look around before you start walking again. Which is yeah, convenient. Definitely some improvement there. So what we do have here, uh, what have we here? It's a room, the rail makes a U-turn and there's a, there's a machine here which hangs under the rail, which is interesting. There is a chute at the bottom. It's good that you tell me because it's hard to see in monochrome. And in the middle are panels of monitoring devices being tended by a droid. Look droid, it's not a model you've seen before. The droid appears to be dedicated to his workstation. It seems harmless enough. Which basically means if a game tells you that it probably isn't very harmless. Um, and I've actually... Ah, I'll just give it some name. Uh, I've actually had uh, sometimes, because you need to climb down in this machine and then go down the chute. And in 
I've actually had occurrences when I just did only that and then the droid already shot me. It was impossible to get past the screen. So you grab the forward backward control of the grabber. So I guess you just shouldn't waste your time too much here. And I like how they used the standard instruments of the MT-32 for also these sound effects like claps and, and synthesizer noises using the pitch control. So fortunately you come to a relatively short landing in a pile of debris. But someone is watching me. You seem to be in a debris enclosed hollow. Poking out of the ceiling is a chute which you were originally entered through. Some crusty lamps linked by a non-UL approved wire provide additional illumination. Some brittle looking wire runs from the lamp to lamp and then disappears into a hole to the left. Now it's, it's a bit difficult to see but the hole is actually here, the wire. You peer into the small opening and notice a tiny reactor which seems to be providing power for the lights. Alright. That can, that can come in handy. Let's just take it. Yeah. And the eerie music keeps playing because those rats are watching me so maybe it's not a good idea to... I better watch where I'm going. What are those rats doing? You can hear something scurrying above, uh, around above you. You can't actually see the rats because they're hidden in the shadows. Yeah. Nice way to break the fourth wall then. Mm. At least I can climb this ladder to get out. Bending aside a thin piece of scrap, you find an opening into another area and climb on in. So this is basically where I was before. I guess I'll take the ladder with me. You grab the ladder and jam it in your pocket. Ouch! Because, yeah, that's the nice thing about adventure games. Or the cool thing about adventure games. You can sort of... Take stuff with you in your pocket. I mean, I also remember... I think it was a Larry game where you have just this... You have this huge cup that, that's about the size of yourself and you decide to carry it in your inside pocket because it's only an adventure game. Anything is possible. I think you can still use... yeah, you can use the mouse to... See, I'm carrying a reactor which you can press. It's an auxiliary reactor. Interesting. I'm carrying a ladder which is used for altitude adjustment. Yes, I know, I already did. And apparently I'm still carrying a piece of orium I picked up on Levion during my last adventure. Uh, this didn't mean anything to me because I never played Space Quest 2 at that time. However, it has long lost it, since lost its glow, but it's still called a glowing gem. Someone or something has done a real job on this tanker. Was this a result of some space battle? Or perhaps you're not the only one roaming around in here? There's some wires hanging around there. Except for the one on the left, most of the wires here look dangerously worn. Well, the one on the left is here, so... Let's just take it. It might come in handy. You take the only decent piece of wire available. Let's see where we can go. Oh, who's that? So, someone beat me up. I've been mucked by some large type of rat. As you pick loose fur from your teeth, you notice a less bulky feeling. 
And that's true because I'm no longer wearing the reactor and I'm also not wearing the wires I just got. So I might have to go back where I was. Let's just go back and because I can actually go down that hole using the ladder. Because it's always a good idea if you steal something and people find out, the first thing you do is just go right back there and steal it again. That seems like the most logical thing to do. was here where I came from can't oh, really I should be able to climb down here right can I use the ladder oh it does okay does he climb down yes he does Maybe if I sneak, if I sneak in there, the rats won't notice me. Well, I will save it here because I know. Uh, yeah, I don't need to make new names all the time. Did it actually save? Let's just check. Uh, save. Well, at least now it did. Because I think if you also, if you walk into the lights, um, maybe only if the rats are watching you. But if you walk into the lights, you get, you get caught. So I know where it is. So I'll just get it again. I'm not near it. Oh, okay. Then how about now? You unhook the reactor from the cheap wires and take it with you. Now to remember. Oh, yeah. The rat also stole my wire, so they are also probably here. And they are. So it's gone dark again. I'm wearing the wires and I'm wearing the reactor. Because, yeah, if I could pick it up and it was interesting enough, I'm surely going to need it very soon. So let's climb up again. Let's not forget to take our leather with us because the fact that you can take it probably means you can it's useful. Which is not of course not not the case for every object you pick up in a Shara adventure game. You might get lots of objects even that are worth points for picking up and you just don't do anything with them. Which was probably their way of sort of misleading you into thinking false plots and going trying to solve the game the wrong way oh no I should get inside this one so let's hope this pesky rat won't mug me again and just let me through to the other side and yes he's nowhere to be seen so now I'm I'm safe for now I must say I'm actually enjoying uh, playing this game. I also remember when I was young, uh, I mean at the time we had this game, I was 15 and I never really got very far in this game. I have to be really careful here. I never got very far in this game because I was just too impatient. I was 15, I had ADHD, so I, I just prefer games with lots of frantic shooting and killing instead of uh, adventure games where you actually have to be patient and think. Um, but it, it, yeah, this is nice that I can relive these games and look at them in a different way than I did then when I was a kid. 
Ah, oh, this is a really big head. A metal head rests, rests nearby. Wow, an ancient model of a battle bot. I bet you'd hate to run into whatever thought brought this big guy down. It looks like something poked it in the eye. Which is his way of saying... Can I look at this eye? There are two eyes on the battle bot head. One of them has been broken. So maybe I can climb... I can climb in. Yes, I can. I love this background music. Now, what do we see here? You find yourself at the bottom of another trash pit. An interesting alley of alien artifacts is strewn from one end to the other. A large ship is in the middle and a small one is off to one side. Yeah, because I look at this ship. It's a cute little thing. You've never seen anything like it in these parts. But then, where are these parts? Some writing on its exterior leads, reads Bowman was here. Which is apparently some reference to, I think, 2001 Space Odyssey. But I never saw that movie, so... And of course, there's another writing. It says, for a good time, don't call, don't call hell. And I think those are the only ones... Yeah, those are the only two it can... Oh, there's more strange objects here. They look like remnants of an orbital space station, or perhaps some type of toys for an oversized child. Well, it must have been a really big child. But yeah, they look like toys from the 80s, like Lego and the other one. I forgot the name, but I remember having these, these toys where you could make... Of these pins and objects, you can make like all sorts of constructions. This ship looks way more interesting. It's a sleek looking number if you can disregard the junk it's rooted in. It must be a recent addition to the collection as everything seems to be intact. Etched on each side is the name Aluminum Mallard. On top is a small hatch. Of course Aluminum Mallard is sort of a reference to Millennium Falcon. Let's, let's save the game here first. Because I know it, this part is not too hard, but I know it's very easy to die here, so... I think... Yeah, there's no good way to scale the slick ship. Exactly, it's... it's I mean, it's not even as high as himself, but... I was able to, to climb into this eye of the, the big head. Uh, this climb seems to be much easier, but yeah, it's a Shara game. So when they decide to put a puzzle uh, somewhere, you really, really don't... You, you have to let go of all logic. And the ladder shot and suddenly got a bit shorter. And yeah, it's very slick up there, but luckily this is all I have to do to get in the ship. Just faced, you're not quite within reach. Okay, well, now I am, I guess. You move into position and grabbing the dull finish of the hatch's handle, commence to open and enter the ship. still take quite some time to load it's probably because it has to build the screen and the engine uh, I guess this port is also quite lazy so the performance is not as good as it, it could be at first you are surprised at how intact the ship's interior is immediately to, immediately to your right is a panel with a red button at midship to the right wall is the ship's main diagnostics computer directly across are two passenger seats ahead of you is the cockpit so let's look at the computer then, to see how this baby is doing. And it says power is critically low, the auxiliary reactor is not online, there's insufficient power to commence with any systems check. And it just immediately goes back. Luckily, I have a reactor with me. And I, th I guess in this case, yeah, it's only t you have to type use reactor. You drop it into the hole and then you find out one of the cables is too short. So if you didn't get the wires by this time, you had to go all the way back to that, that spot to get the wire. 
which is a bit annoying. Yeah, I had some training runs before I recorded this video to make it a bit more smooth and not struggle too much. So you carefully connect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back in place once you've finished. So let's see what the computer says now. And it says my power level is nominal. The reactor is online, which is cool. So the reactor is nominal. It will check landing gear, which is nominal. Which is pretty cool. And it says warp motivator. Um, yeah, and it says malfunction, it's not installed. Luckily, uh, as you remember on the first screen, we actually saw one. And it's actually very nice of them that they zoom, zoom in. Uh, so you, sh you see the shape and you sort of recognize the object if you didn't already. Now, there's also a red button. Uh, I know for a fact that if you press it, uh, you will actually uh, you will actually die. Uh, so I will not do that for now because it will make the video uh, longer than needed. And there's plenty of Space Quest walkthrough videos where people show this off, So and even in color. Uh, I will now get out of the ship because we need to find some way. Yeah, yeah, I actually exit to the hatch instead, I know. We need to find some way to install this warp motivator into the ship. Now we can see this really big hole on top that also showed on the computer. Climb is not a word he recognizes. Ah. Ouch again. So we know where it's lying. We know we have this, this machine that we could use. Uh, so perhaps that machine actually has some way of picking stuff up and apparently this hole is open so just dropping it in uh, will probably do the trick but it means we have to get back to to that screen again This tune is, is quite short, uh, but still it doesn't bother. It's, it's, I think the music for this game is really, really well written. Am I going the right way? Yes, I am. I need to get back to that conveyor belt again and jump on the rail. Now, as you can tell, I'm, I'm only using my keyboard to move him around. Because, yeah, the mouse, it, it really doesn't work. I mean, he really just only walks straight, straight to your mouse pointer. So if something is in the way, he will just he will just stop. He won't automatically walk around it. He will just walk in a straight line on, until where your mouse pointer is. And I think, yeah, in this case, does this game? I don't think it even... For some reason, they also removed joystick support from this engine on the Atari ST. I don't know why. Maybe because nobody used it in the other games anyway. Lucky for us, this game doesn't have any of the horrible, dangerous ladders and stairs that, like, King's Quest had. So I'm not really missing joystick support in this one. So let's stand and jump again. Not being killed. if we can get into the machine.
And I will save again because knowing my luck, that droid will probably instantly see me and just kill me right away, which I don't want to happen because I want to play this game at least far enough. Client in machine. Kling? What's that? What word is that? Climb in machine. Yeah, as you can see, because there's more movement, in the, he's moving really slowly. So plopping into the seat, you grasp the forward backward control of the grabber. And of course, we're going to go backwards because we love this beep. I think, yeah, you are riding below a narrow rail suspended high above the floor of the freighter. It's a long way down to the junk piles below, yeah, so I better don't climb out. But what can I do with the machine? From your seat you see a handle presently being gripped by you, which controls motion, and a button marked claw. So if I push the button, it will send the claw down. And in this case, you don't have to be really accurate. I think it was this, uh, just the back of the screen and then to the right side, and it will just be at the right position. And I know this because I've watched some playthroughs. Um, back in the day, it probably took a lot of figuring out where the screen was to, uh, to actually grab this thing. The claw senses contact with the warp motivator, grasps it firmly, and begins the ascent back to the grabber. So now I have it, all I need to do is just drop it into that ship and hopefully that will be enough to repair it. Now interestingly enough, this conveyor belt now also has stopped moving. Uh, maybe they did this because it was too difficult for them to have that movement and the movement of the machine at the same time. I don't know exactly know. So yeah, they didn't really know how to use the performance of the ST for the game engines. Because it's really not necessary to, to restrict any movement of screen on screen that much to make a game playable. Especially at the time when this game, game came out, there were so many games that showed that with clever programming, the ST was actually capable of a lot. Um, I think it was on this side that I need to be. So let's push the button again. I like the detail that he's actually looking down, like, where is this thing going? Sensing an adequate surface, the claw releases its cargo and begins the ascent to the grabber unit. The object thuds into space within the cavity, into place within the cavity of the ship. So that's that's actually pretty convenient. It just you just plug it in. It's really a plug and play warp motivator. All right. So let's get back to the ship. Which the only way to do it is actually going through the chute again. At this stage, do I have the ladder? Yes, I have. It's really important that you have to grab you have to grab your ladder here because otherwise you can go get down the chute, but you can't go anywhere. So if you leave the ladder at the ship and then do this, you basically made the game unwinnable for yourself. I guess. Maybe there's other ways to, to still finish the game, but I haven't found out any of them, so. I will save the game first because you will never know if the droid may find me. So I will 
climb out and walk before the droid sees me. Because as soon as he sees you, he shoots you and you're dead. So I land in soft pile of debris. And I will just use the ladder to get up again. Use. And of course, don't forget to take it with me, because otherwise I can't get into the ship. You grab the ladder and jam it into your pocket. And that still hurts. one of my favorite background tunes in games. It's, it's sort of atmospheric. So you can tell it was written by a proper musician. again. And use the ladder to climb on the ship. Yes, it's slick up there. I am careful, don't worry. You move into position and grabbing the dolphin is commence to open and enter the ship. So let's see what the computer says now. System check and warp motivator nominal. So it looks like this bird's in good shape. So we can probably use it to get off the ship. So let's let's sit down in a pilot's chair. So you are sitting in the pilot seat of this sporty little ship. In front of you is the control panel, which contains a computer screen. Okay. Well, let's check that screen then. Now this is also sort of the the end of this stage of the game. Um, which see, I have engines, I have radar. Um, it's very important. Yeah, you can start up the engines. But before you take off, you really should enable your radar because otherwise, yeah, if you don't, the ship will just rise and then fly into the ceiling and you will crash and die. So let's see what happens if I take off. You feel a strong rumbling as the ship strains to loosen itself from the confines of the junk heap accumulated at its base. Finally, it begins to rise. And it, it's rising kind of jerky. They really were not very good with movement on this on the Atari. The ship rises several meters, then stops abruptly. An alarm from the computer attracts your attention. And it's always nice if the computer attracts my attention, you automatically uh, automatically look at it. So it's halted due to obstruction. Um, 
Luckily, I have some weapons. I want to get off this ship. So if I go to my weapon system, I can probably just shoot a hole uh, in the wall. Now, it, it's of course, I have shields, which is probably an indication that I might have to use them, uh, which I will, because, yeah, if I don't... Actually, the, my own shot will kill me if I don't. The shot blasts a new orifice in the side of the junk freighter. And I get sort of sucked out. The pressure generated by the desire of the ship's atmosphere to escape to the considerably lower pressure of space causes your ship to be spit out like a watermelon seed. But at least I'm out of there. So let's see if we can go anywhere. Uh, there's no course selected, so I have to enable the navigation system, which is also quite cleverly made for this game. And, um, that didn't have a lot of possibilities, but it will just let me, let me scan space. So it's, it's difficult to read, but this is planet Ortega. Um, which they don't know if it's inhabited, but it's very volcanic and crater, so it doesn't really look like something I want to go, somewhere I want to go. Scanning sector, okay. This is planet Fleabut, uh, and it has one known settlement, so yeah, maybe that one. It, it seems to look nice. Let's just go there. And it, it seemed the screen seems to be missing the scanning animation for some reason. I don't know why. I think I tested this one on Monochrome before and it actually did show the animation. So I have no idea why it does that. Um, but at least I've set in a course. I am free in space. So let's go for light speed. We suddenly see another ship decloaking with some very very eerie music and he looks like a tough guy confirm roger wilco case something yeah it's vending machine fraud so apparently his assignment is to terminate me which is kind of difficult to read, especially in monochrome mode. But it seems he's after me, so... I think that, that'll be my next puzzle. So, a flashing message on my monitor attracts my attention, which, which basically means, yeah, I've arrived at the coordinates I was going to. It's orbiting planet Flea, but let's land there. Now the space flight in color mode, they are very colorful. In monochrome, it's, it's a bit underwhelming, but the sound effects are still really nice. I love this game. It's really, I think I will do a playthrough for myself right to the end at some point, but I'm not going to record everything. With a mighty bump, you set the aluminum mallet down on the surface of flea butt. Yeah, which is a bit of a naughty name. I mean, this game has a lot of humor in it, but sometimes it can get a bit childish. Of course, you have to tell him to get out of the chair. And this time he can use the ramp just get out so you don't have to fear uh, falling off the ship anymore as you step out of your ship onto the surface of flea but you are hit in the face by the harsh winch winds it looks like a storm is brewing meanwhile another spacecraft touches down elsewhere on the very same planet yeah which was probably the aircraft that was following me Of 
Oh, this is annoying. He pushes a button and he becomes inv invisible. Which hardly seems fair. At least you can see his footsteps. So, this planet doesn't seem to be very, very safe, that's for sure. Uh, but also, I think... Yeah, this is probably uh, as far as I'm going to play it for this video. Um, because I think I think uh, we got a pretty good image. Whoa, no! As and I walk down. I think on the PC version you can actually sort of escape from this snake, but here you just get immediately eaten and you die. There's no way to move back from the screen if you go here. So this planet seems to be quite dangerous if you walk off too far. And I turned into a snake chow. But yeah, that's that's enough. Uh, for now, I guess I'll just quit the game. Uh, at some point, I will I will play more of it. Uh, but yeah, I must say I really enjoyed playing it now. And uh, yeah, back then I wasn't patient enough when I was young. But now it it's it really is a great game. Uh, I really love it. Despite the slowdowns on the ST, probably it plays a bit better on the PC, and it plays a bit better if you play it in color. But nevertheless, I think this was kind of a nice special one uh, especially because nobody ever played it like this probably in monochrome with mt32 support so i always like to give people something special i hope you enjoyed it uh, but this is the end of the video i i will leave it at here and hopefully see you next time